one and only Granny Four Barrel. In the flesh. Is this bad? <laughs> How you doing, man? Or ma'am, should doing I say? Pretty good. How about? <laughs> yeah, I know I'm both, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm staying one step ahead of the shovel. How about you? <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, that is a, a motto to live life by. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to do the same thing you're doing. That's right. I learned that from my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so, so does your grandma approve of Granny Four Barrel? Well, you know, unfortunately, my grandma is not with us anymore. But, well, grandma was alive. She certainly did. She, she was I a know, rocker. Huh? I know she's, she, yes, that's right. I mean, you know, there's something about ornery old women that like to <laughs> kick ass. I don't know. It runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I, I didn't realize you were from uh, upstate New York, Granny. I, I thought you were from that's down right. south for some reason. That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, up near Syracuse, Oswego, up, uh, up north. Nice. Nice. Very cool. So, um, you know, going through and doing some research on you and trying to find out some uh, info and, and and news and dirt and things to talk about, uh, something I did come across was uh, Jesse James Dupree of Jackal. He he seemed like he was pretty instrumental early on with you guys. Oh, absolutely. Jesse was uh, – he certainly was. He took a liking to what we were trying to do and, uh, you know, gave us a lot of pointers and suggestions and – he certainly was. He was instrumental. Was he a little freaked out by uh, by uh, by Granny? Well, I mean, you know, Jesse's pretty crazy to begin with, so I mean, <laughs> it was right in it was right in his wheelhouse. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like, did, did you if you freak Jesse out, then then like you're on the right track. Yeah, I mean, he got right. Right into the mind of Granny, and uh, you know, early on, back in uh, 2014, he had us, him and Michael Ballard, had us come out to full throttle and give her a little test run in front of the, you know, the crowds out there, and they loved it. So we just kept, you know, moving forward with it. That's awesome. Now, how about um, I saw too, you guys had the, had the chance one time to have a uh, Dave Navarro come up on stage and jam with you. Yeah, we did. So, uh, in fact, that was on that full throttle run. So we did 10 days at full throttle. And then on the way back home, there was this, there's this famous uh, piercing establishment called Piercology in Columbus, Ohio. And there was having a 20th anniversary celebration at some club. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. But, uh, you know, Dave Navarro, he happens to be involved in the piercing suspension community. And uh, as obviously, as you know, he's a musician. He is as well. So when we were there, we said, hey, Dave, you want to you want to jam with us? And uh, he got up and played Ballroom Blitz. And I know there's some videos kicking around because I've seen them. And that was one of the early versions of Granny. I looked a little bit different, but I was just as fucking crazy then. (laughs) I love it. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Oh. Now, now, how did you guys end up hooking up with uh, with Stormy Daniels? I, I mean, and she directed uh, your video for uh, for She Likes Guns. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, Jesse. That had a lot to do with Jesse. That was a friend of his. And, uh, you know, when we was looking to do our first video and our first single, She Likes Guns, uh, he suggested her. So, you know, we got together. We did that video. And this was long before Stormy was in the news all the time. But, uh. You know, we weren't able to put that song out on radio because there's always some gun violence fucking shit up for everybody. And not that our song has anything to do with that, but because of the title, the radio was a little sketched out. and sure. didn't want to do it. So we just we shelved the whole thing and said, all right, well, just, you know, we got a video sometime. And then, you know, six, seven months later, Stormy was in the news and we were like, well, we got this video and, you know, we paid for it and busted our asses. Let's put it out. Right. So, yeah. It was kind of like a blessing that all happened to Stormy for you guys. Well, I mean, I hope it was mutual. You know, we got some extra, you know, visibility because of it. And, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. Now, now, now how about like, um, 
speaking of visibility, like when you guys like, did you guys start like, uh, I guess on the uh, Syracuse like rock scene? Like, I mean, you had to like freak people out. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, Granny, the incarnation of Granny is about eight years old, and uh, wow. me and the boys decided, you know, why don't we do something different? And, you know, I guess the spirit of Granny and the whole concept of nonconformity, rebellion, horror, shock rock, all just kind of, you know, went right into my soul. And I said, you know what, I'm going to be a fucking crazy old woman front man for a rock band. <laughs> You know, we started playing some shows up here. Our first one, uh, as the actual band, Granny Four Barrel, was at uh, the Lost Horizon. And it went so good, you know, we just kept on going with it. It's just a, I don't, it's a, it's a fucking trip. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize. It. So, so you guys have been around for eight years. That's a long freaking time. That's right. Yeah, wow. long time. You know, but it doesn't seem like it because we're busy every year. And, you know, I've been in a lot of different metal bands over the years, and I've been in rock and roll a long time. But, you know, this this thing has some legs, and it's a lot of fun, and it's legit. And it's just, uh, it's, it encompasses everything that I am. I like theater, and, I, you know, I like acting, and I like music. And it just goes together, so we got a shock theater outfit going now. Do you feel like you're like the whole, like for eight years, like maybe for like the first six and a half, you guys weren't taken seriously, and now it's like, wow, like we're starting to get like some respect all of a sudden. Well, you know, it's two ways, right? So, I mean, the only thing right now, I could, well, I got a few comparisons, but let's just take Steel Panther, for example, right? Okay. I mean, everybody knows there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek going on, but every one of them musicians is legit. And you know when you're watching Satchel up there shredding, you know, you're like, I mean, this is no joke, but yet it's right. a good time. And that's really right. what it's about. You know, we're not trying to come up with a gimmick. We're trying to have a fucking good time and not be all serious all the time. But yet, at the same time, it is serious. And I think that all of our fans get that. And they relate to the idea of a surrogate badass metal granny that they always wish they had. So, you know, they're always coming up with scenarios for me. It's like a granny's like this you know, unpainted canvas that everybody has a hand in. They're like, hey, Granny, you should do this next time. Hey, Granny, that'd be fucking cool if you did this. (laughs) And so, like, we just kind of, you know, we build it as we go. That's awesome. Now, now, how about, uh, I'm going to tell you this, too. Like, so, I mean, you've come on my radar. It's probably about a year and a half now. Um, And now, all of a sudden, like, I guess it was a month ago, I start hearing Nitro Sexy on Sirius XM's Octane. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like, right. it, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I, and now it's like in heavy rotation. I'm like, good for Granny. She's making it to the other side. <laughs> That's right. You know, and just this week, Bay, we got, uh, so we was in hyper rotation. We got a, uh, you go look at that. In fact, you go to my Instagram right now. I just put two posts up. You can see that media base spin shot. We're at 53 right underneath the Slipknot right at the top. Slipknot's number one with 53, and Granny's right under Slipknot with 53 spins this week. I mean, that's not too fucking shabby. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> And, and then, I, you know, I saw that one, and then I saw there was another one, which I didn't even know, like, this list even exists. It was just, like, for strip clubs or something? Yeah, that's right. So what happens is, uh, you know, our manager, Bob Chipotle, who's uh, owner of Concrete Marketing, you know, they've been okay. around for 30 years. I mean, you know, every sure. single metal band on the planet knows who they is. And, uh, yeah, Bob, you know, he's uh, he, he's connected with that world as well. and um. You know, you've got to figure that there's thousands of strip clubs across the country and the world, right? Well, they got playlists, they got DJs because they're playing music all night, and that's a whole separate charting system. And uh, you know, it's it's just it's like it's like radio. Um, but I never Ooh, knew yeah. about it either. But now we're out there getting spun. <laughs> 
Uh, which which one means more, the strip club one, Granny, or or, or the other one? <laughs> Well, each one means more in its own special way, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, that's so awesome. Now, the video for Nitro Sexy is just a, a total badass video. <laughs> well, thank you. What was it like being on top of that car as it's racing down the strip? Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was a trip. The guy was like, the location manager was like, now... Granny, you don't have to, you know, get up there. Maybe we can get somebody and dress up because it's dangerous. And I was like, I do my own fucking stunts. Like, <laughs> get me up there. So we did a couple test runs. And as long as I felt like the chair was bolted down and we could go like 60 miles an hour and be fairly safe, I went for it. So, But I was strapped to that chair for six hours. I mean, I'm, I'm not exaggerating oh, yeah. six hours because we had to just keep doing takes. So... Down the strip back, down the strip back. Six hours later when my, you didn't get to see how sunburned my face and my lips was because that was the only thing that was exposed. <laughs> but it was pretty fucking cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that video is awesome. Great song, great video. I, I think it just sums it up. But I was like, wow, Granny's hardcore. She's on that roof of that car and she she's not backing down. <laughs> that's reminiscent of the old... Uh, Beverly Hill, Beverly Hillbillies. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Granny, on, she used to be on the back of that old truck. <laughs> so that's funny. <laughs> now, something too that I came across, and, and I was wondering if if you guys, uh, if it, this ended up hurting you guys, was um, pledge music. I saw you guys were uh, on a pledge music, so uh, I know a lot of people got screwed in that whole deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, fortunately, we weren't in it too deep, but I feel bad for. Uh, you know, people to put their money in, and yeah. uh, you know, I'm hoping that they got it back. It, we just we just got the thing going, and then it collapsed. So yeah, I feel bad about that. But uh, and what I liked what I liked about it was that it wasn't like a Kickstarter. It wasn't right. like you know we was asking for money. It was like you were just pre-ordering shit, and it right. was pretty cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. With some cool prizes, you know what I mean, like uh, rewards and stuff. Yeah. The more you, yeah, it was a super cool. It, it just blows my mind. Like, I'm like, hey, they just basically took the money and ran these people. Yeah, I mean that's that's not the good best way to do business. I don't think. Yeah. No. I think we got to send Granny after them with that four barrel. That's right. Me and the uh, revenueers will show up with our shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> So now, uh, how about uh, you guys going out on tour for the summer, or what are you up to? All right, so uh, we're going to be doing some select shows across the country for the summer, and then uh, we're going to get ready for a fall tour. I'm not sure who we're going out with, but we are going to go uh-huh. out again. Um, but we do have a show July 30th in New York City. It's a showcase for labels and agents, and everybody's invited to that. That's at the Bowery Electric. In New York okay. City, okay. July 30th, 7 p.m. Now, is the plan to release a full-length album? Because I know you guys just have singles out there right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always been the plan, but because the music landscape keeps changing, you know, in yeah. a band like us, we're, you know, we're just trying to get ourselves established. So, you know, the management's like, you know, let's just put another single out. I mean, we're sitting on a record, and I just recorded four tracks with David Bendis, and I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, David, you know, David is, uh, you know, go ahead and Wikipedia David Bendis, the producer. Uh, I mean, he's he's done everybody from Freaking Benjamin to Kill Switch, Paramore, Bring Me the Horizon, okay. and everything in, between, everything in between, and he just did, in fact, Nitro Sexy, that was that was recorded by David Bendis. Interesting. So okay, so the album is done and you're sitting on it. It seems like the whole single thing. Like I'm totally in full support of that. I think that's all bands need to do now. Is just like as a matter of fact, I just recently started managing a band down here in the Philadelphia area called Rat Rod, and they have a, they were getting ready to put out their second album. And they're like, you know what, we let's do something different. And they decided, you know what, we're going to hold the album. Like, if you want it, like, it's available. You can buy the physical copy off the website, come to a show, buy a physical copy. 
but they're not like going to release it digitally. Only no, you know, yeah, it, it makes sense because it's not like the old days. I mean, right. if you release a record right now, I mean, if you're an established band, you know, a big band, and you got the, you know, you got the pipeline to put it into, and you got the fan base. And you put out a record, it makes sense. But if you're just right. starting out, you know, you burn that record in six months. Yep. It's old news, and you just wasted, you know, you wasted the record because nobody cares. And if you're trying to get, you know, you know, get people excited about it, I mean, your fans care. But anybody that's in the industry, they might be like, well, uh, yeah, that was your that was your old album. What about your new one? And you're like, fuck, it took me two years just to do this one. <laughs> Right, so exactly. You've got to do singles right now. It's the way to go. Get the maximum life out of it. That's it. I fully agree. I love the idea. Cool. So, so, all right, so where uh, where should we send everybody to learn more about Granny Four Barrel and, and uh, the with them dates when they start popping up? Yeah, so, you know, you can send everybody to the website, right, grannyfourbarrel.com. You should go to, you know, just, just my name, Granny the number four and barrel Instagram, Facebook. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, um, but I'm, but I'm on Facebook too. And then of course, you know, Spotify, um, since the octane release, our Spotify numbers went from, you know, something to a whole lot. <laughs> it's like, you know, when it keeps going every day, when I check it, our streams have gone up like, you know, 30 times what they was in two weeks. Um, you know, Amazon, Deezer, Napster, anywhere anywhere that you can buy music, that's where you can find Granny. Nice, nice. Well, Granny, this was great talking to you, and I hope uh, at some point you guys uh, come down to vis- visit me in Philly. Oh, absolutely, because our publicist chips to PIs right down there. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, I know we got some. I, yeah, I know, and that's how we got connected. And I know that uh, you know they got some shows planned, but I, I know I'm going to see you soon. Very cool. That's what I like to hear. Now I just get, Now I just need to have you cut an ID for me, Granny. This is Granny Four Barrel, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. All right, here it comes. This is Granny Fall Barrel, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Awesome. How's that? Granny, thanks so much. That was awesome. You rock. Look I forward appreciate to it, man. Absolutely. Take care, man. You got you it. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.